Hello everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Rich Reviews, and welcome back to the Ferrari 458 Spider. Now when this video is released on the 22nd of October, it will be exactly a year since we collected the 458. So today I'm going to talk to you about what it's been like living with the 458 for a whole year. The goods, the bads, and has there been any uglies? October the 22nd, 2020, right in the thick of COVID. It was a, a tentative time because, you know, you, some people would have said you're crazy to buy a supercar around the time of COVID. And a lot of people were running scared. And I know some people actually bought cars around that time and actually sold them back again to the dealers and lost money because of it, because they were so worried about what COVID was going to produce. I made a big leap of faith and I bought the car and it turned out to be the right decision. Do I regret buying a 458? Hell no. Get that out of the way straight away. Has there been any ups and downs? Just passing some horses now, so we just slow down for the horses. Yeah, of course there's been some ups and downs. There's been additional incurred costs as well, for sure. When I bought the car, stupidly, many people would think, I had no appreciation that I'd have to actually widen the garage door for a start. It could be argued that the, the garage is a lot better for it, it's a lot more secure and the internal width of the garage needed sorting out because it was very tight with the doors of the 993, um, with opening the doors of the 993 so it was even tighter of course with the 458 but the actual width of the opening for the garage door was far too restrictive. Um, literally we had millimetres either side of the, of the door mirrors when they were folded in. Just not usable, you couldn't chance it going in and out of the garage like that. I was very fortunate that when we bought the, the, um, the 458 it went straight into winter storage and then we didn't have to, we, you know, I had all the, I had six months pretty much to decide what I was going to do and to plan for the work being done on the garage, which is pretty much what I did. And there's been other costs incurred as well, but there's been costs that I like, expected. So costs for having the whole car detailed, um, having PPF put on the whole car as well. So those were costs I knew would be coming because I knew I was gonna, I was gonna get the, I knew that I wanted the car in the same condition the 993 was, so that I could take it out and bring it back and it stay in the same condition. And pretty much the only way you could do that is by um, putting. PPF all over the car and obviously making sure that you clean the car regimentally and you don't use it in bad weather. So was it the right decision to sell the 993S and to buy the 458? Yeah definitely it was the right decision. I'd had the 993 for 12 years. It was time for a change. Unless I was going to keep the 993 for the rest of my life, then I always wanted a Ferrari and, and you know, it had to take place, the change had to take place. And a 993, although it sounds good with the, with the air-cooled sound, it doesn't sound like this. Done everything we could with a 993, and although 
obviously we still enjoyed the car it was a great car to own beautiful car and I, and I still keep in touch with the owner really nice guy really looks after the car it couldn't have gone to a better owner so I'm happy I'm really happy about that transition the sale couldn't have gone better to a nicer guy and it's you know it's the best possible scenario without me still owning the 993 some people have said, will have said keep the 993 and buy the 458 well two things are an issue with there number one I just haven't got the money to own two cars like that to own the cars outright and number two I didn't have the garage space and there's no way I would have put either car outside for any prolonged period to be honest I'm not happy with putting either car outside for even a day so you know there's no way that would work out A 993 sounds fantastic, but does it sound like this? No, it doesn't. 993 doesn't look like this. If I was doing, if, if I was going to do a very loose comparison between the two cars, the 993, fantastic engineering, fantastically built. There's no way any Ferrari is built as good as the 993. Just the, that was bomb proof that car it was just fantastically well built the, the 458 is very well built as well for a Ferrari but Ferraris just aren't built like those 993s it didn't have the performance of this and the transition was everything I hoped it to be it, it gave the performance the additional performance it gave us the red car I needed to own a Ferrari before I passed away, before I left this mortal coil, as they say, and it's, it's working out very well. Very, very, very fortunate that I managed to get into a 2015, the last year of the, of the 458 Spider build. One of the key benefits of buying a 2015 458, and I was very lucky to get a 2015 458, is that the car still has two years left of its seven year service pack. And that is a great benefit because that even though the 458s are bulletproof and the services aren't that expensive, they are still fairly expensive. Um, to not have to pay services for two years, to, to not incur the cost of servicing for two years is, is fantastic. Obviously, a lot of things are outside the service pack, but um, pretty much, you know, these, these cars are bulletproof, um, pretty much like the 993 was. Not as bulletproof as the 993, but, but you know, for a Ferrari, very, 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 very reliable and very solid. We'll talk about the servicing a little bit later.
So what has the ownership been like for the first year of ownership of, of the 458 Spider? Um, with regards to the servicing, it's, it was actually a very good experience. Obviously, it's still got two years left of the service pack, of the seven-year service pack. Um, the car was taken to Dick Lovitz in Swindon, where I bought the car. Fantastic experience. I worked there for the day um, while I was servicing the car. Um, they could not do more for me. Um, you know, regular refreshments um, while I was working there. I had my own office area. I mean, it was fantastic. You know, I couldn't have been looked after better, really. Um, the car was serviced, no issues, as you'd expect and uh, all good, you know, drove the car back, no problems. Let's talk a little bit about the driving experience differences. Again, it's not really a good comparison to make with regards to the 993. The 993 was a great car to drive. It was a great car to own. It was, with the 993, it was the experience of driving that car. The feel of the car, the smell of the car, um, knowing that you're in such a beautiful car. Um, that was a fantastic experience in itself totally different experience in the 458. This car really hits all your senses. There's, there's nothing it does not touch. You've got the sound, you've got the feel, the overall experience. Um... You know, it, it gives you that fizz. <laughs> it's hard to explain unless, until you actually drive one of these cars and you experience for yourself for, for a period of time. The, the, the fizz, if you call it a fizz rating experience of the 458 compared to the 993. 458 up here, 993 down here. That's not to belittle the 993 at all. The 993 was a beautiful, fantastic car. And I love that car. It's been a fantastic experience. And um, the driving experience of the 458 is just supreme, you know? I mean, the acceleration of the thing, apart from that. I mean, it's a, it's a six year old car now, but if you look at the engineering, you're talking about probably, um, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, this engineering, because the actual car was released, the 458 was released in circa 2009. Yeah, this is a 2015 model, but it wasn't that far changed. It hasn't, you know, it's not like the suspension or the engine's been, been advanced at all since it was actually inaugurated in 2009. So this is really a, like 11 year old, 11, 12 year old engineering. Um, you'd never think it driving the car. It, it's, you know, it goes like a far superior car. One of the things I may do is I may upgrade the exhaust system on this. I may put what's called an X-pipe where you actually get um, the, the, exhaust, the exhaust emissions and mixing from the two banks, uh, which, which has a, a real sensory difference with regards to the sound that emits from the car, um, the sound that emits from the exhaust system, and also increases the brake horsepower of the car. But that would be pretty cool as well. But the sound, you know, it just enhances the sound even more. You put a good exhaust on these and they sound like an F1 car, just sound fantastic, you know? Not that it doesn't sound fantastic already. <laughs> There's been a few um, nigglies at some point, I think the battery's gonna need to be replaced, which is very common. These cars need battery, batteries replaced about every two years. Um, probably it's never had a battery replaced in this car. Uh, the charger that the car comes with, the standard Ferrari charger, is a low specified CTEC charger. So the first thing that most people do, me included, was to pretty much not bin the charger, but put it to one side for resale purposes, um, but buy a, a, one of the higher class, higher, more intelligent electronic CTEC chargers, which was the MXS5. And the MXS5 has more intelligence, it actually communicates with the battery and has an understanding of, and has an understanding of how, um, how the battery is depleted and it can actually do certain remedial work to the battery plates as well, to the actual, to the actual plates of the, or the actual cell plates of the battery. So, you know, if I was going to say unplanned, unplanned cost during the, the first year ownership of the car, um, having the garage work, having the remediation work performed and the, the, uh, the widening of the garage, that was definitely an unplanned additional cost. Purchasing things like a CTEC charger, that was an additional cost that wasn't planned, but I mean, it's a, it's a small amount of additional cost. Overall, the experience has been really good for the first year and, and pretty much uh, how I'd hoped it would be. Uh, the car's about to go back into storage now for the winter for six months and and when i had it in storage for the first six months there's always a concern 
that the car's not going to start again or there's going to be issues when you turn the key but no issues whatsoever car fired up no problems whatsoever um, with the 993 that I had before obviously there was no concerns with that that was bulletproof but Ferraris they've got a name for being temperamental compared to Porsches but uh, the 458's been really good so no problems whatsoever on that side um, with regards to you know has it changed my life at all in the last year I'd say it has you know it's, it's it's opened up a lot of doors that the 993 never did. It's given us the availability to a lot more um, fantastic experiences. Um, I've got to say that a lot of that is in association with Dick Lovett. So thank you very much, Dick Lovett. You really looked after us for the first year. Hopefully that continues, I'm sure it will. Things like um, day one Salon Privé, um, hospitality passes in, onto day one of Salon Privé. I mean, that's a fantastic experience. That was great. Um, fantastic for the channel because it allowed us to get some content out before all the other YouTubers and just fantastic experience to be at Salon Privé on day one you know we've never been to Salon Privé before so phenomenal experience. Dick Lovitz have invited us to drive um, quite a lot of the actual cars so I've, I've test driven the Roma, F8 Tributo, the F8 Spider. Um, it's pretty cool you know we've been to the 296 launch and we're going to another 296 specialised event um, in the coming near future uh, meeting up with the guides from the Ferrari Owners Club, the different regions, the Cotswolds region in particular, have been really good. So yeah, it's been a great experience. It's been really cool. So, you know, if I was to answer overall, do I regret selling the 993? Yes, I regret selling the 993 because I love the car. Do I regret overall buying the 458 to replace the 993 and the whole experience of changing the 993 for a 458, which was the plan? No, I don't. Um, love the 993, but it's been the experience I expected to be and it's worked out very well for the first year. Let's hope the second year works out as well as the first year. I'm sure it will, but we'll let you know in a year's time. So in summary, do I regret selling the 993 and buying the 458? Definitely not. Um, what has the experience been like for the first year? Phenomenal. You know, events, owning the car, the driving of the car, it's just been phenomenal for the first year. It's been everything I'd hoped it would be. Long may that continue. With regards to events that we're going to be covering off next year, um, we've got the Modball Rally to cover off next year. That's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be a really great experience. Um, we hope to continue doing things like um, Salon Privé, etc. Um, we've got a few things lined up with regards to some third parties. Um, more on that later on. Um, make sure you subscribe to be able to catch future content and to make sure you're notified of all future incoming videos. We're going to keep advancing the channel and moving it forward next year as we have this year. And um, of course, we're going to keep creating great content for you. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Great future content to come. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And as usual, we'll see you in the next video.